Okay, good evening everyone. Today is our first meeting in uh, the ISO 27001 project implementation. And uh, we're going to do that most probably every Saturday. And I'll send you the schedule. Uh, so you will get to know what topic will be discussed every Saturday. So today is the first uh, meeting for the project implementation. And uh, for people who didn't attend before the introduction in the previous lecture, I just want to clarify that this is like a meeting to discuss a real project implementation. I mean, uh, I mean, you will be working in this project. You will get tasks to do. So my objective or my scope is to get you some real life experience from this uh, project. So let's start. Our meeting would be around 45 minutes or 50 minutes, and then I'm going to leave like 10 minutes in case any of you have questions. So let me start. As I mentioned, this will be called Cyber Saturday. We're going to do a session every Saturday, and every Saturday we will discuss an implementation about something. So maybe we're going to discuss an implementation about incident management, how it's done in real life, and how to utilize that or how to use that in the ISMS implementation. One Saturday, we will be talking about access control. One Saturday, we're going to talk about uh, uh, risk management. So we'll divide topics over the weeks, I mean over Saturdays. And I'll send you the schedule so you can select the topics that you need to be aware of from the implementation point of view, and you can attend them. So our objective is to see how we are implementing information security management system in any organization. And this is a real project. I mean, I'm going to share with you real templates, real document, real process. So hopefully you will get the knowledge. So for people who need to get experience or people who are planning to get uh, some certificate like CISSP, when you have your own experience, it will definitely help you. Besides, even if you plan to get a certificate like CISSP or any similar certificate, once you finish getting certificate, at least you will have some experience that if you sit for an interview or something, you know what you are talking about. So it's not just about uh, terminology or it's not just about understanding the concept you need to understand how it get implemented in real life the iso 27001 consists of three different area i mean you will learn three different area in information security we're going to talk about the iso 27001 in a little bit depth and i'm going to show you the standard itself right now but let me clarify that the iso which is a standard it's reflecting, or actually, if any entity need to apply to get the ISO 27001, it need to uh, show to the organization that they are implementing the best practice, all ISO 27001 controls, which you're going to see in a few minutes. But those controls are not only technical control. I mean, what I need you uh, uh, to understand very well that information security is not just the technical security part. So if you came from a technical background, don't think that, yes, I know how to configure a firewall. I know how to configure an IPS so I can implement the ISMS. This is not true. Information security, it's a whole generic, generic concept. Think about yourself not from a business perspective, but personally. Assume that you have some important information on your like laptop or on your smartphone. Do you think if you just implement some encryption and assign a password on the laptop or smartphone, now your information is secured? Definitely not. You maybe lose the, 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 the device. Not necessarily it get hacked, but maybe you're going to lose it. Maybe uh, it will like get damaged. Nothing happened, but the machine get damaged. So all incident will, will end up with losing the information. So 
ISMS is to implement technical security, also known as logical security, to implement administrative security, which is policy and procedures. And we're going to explain what is the importance of policy and procedures in a few minutes and to implement physical security. Surveillance scam, doors, uh, uh, alarm, access control, this kind of things. So when we're going to talk about ISMS, you need to make sure that the organization are implementing the three different security uh, categories, technical, administrative, and physical security. So if you came from a technical background, maybe this will be your strengths. I mean, you'll be strong in this part, but you still need to learn about administrative and physical security. If you don't have that much of technical background, it's not an issue at all. You will get more in depth into the administrative security and physical security and so on and so forth. Also, I would like to clarify that maybe physical security, it's a part of the ISMS. But realistically, we are not the one who's doing it. We are getting people to do that, but we are just making sure that the right things is getting done. For instance, fire alarm. You will not be the one who installs the fire alarm in the organization, but you need to make sure in the checklist that you have that fire alarm is there and it has been tested by, by the right team. So I will start from scratch. I will not depend on any background that you have. So we're going to start from scratch. And please uh, feel free, but actually we need to do that by the end of the class, so it will not be interrupted because the time is li limited. Write down any questions that you have. And once we finish the session, I'll try to answer all your questions. What exactly we will be covering uh, to the, uh, or in this project we will learn about the ISO 27001. What exactly is ISO 27001, also known as ISMS? We will be talking about information asset management, risk management, incident management, access control, policy and procedures, information security awareness, uh, uh, network security, operation security, data centers, uh, I'm sorry, I, I wrote it twice. Vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. Actually, it's one of the activity that is needed for ISMS, but for people who are studying ethical hacking, penetration testing, they need to know the role of the VA and PET in the uh, ISMS. Backup and restoration testing. We're going to talk about uh, business continuity planning. We're going to talk about data classification. So those are going to be the topic covered in this project. And I'm, on sh I'm going to show you each one of those topics, how we are implementing it in an organization, and how to make sure that the ISO requirement is fulfilled. As I mentioned in the beginning of this class, that on each Saturday, we will discuss one topic. And I will send you the schedule. I mean, if you want to attend the full project, which I suggest, you are most than welcome to attend. But if you are okay with one of those topics, but you need to understand another topic like risk management, like operation security, like how data center get audited, things like that, you will be aware of the dates and then you can attend this specific topic itself. But if you have the option, I suggest that you get involved in all the domains, at least you get a complete understanding of the standard. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the ISO now. Let me show you how the ISO look like, what is the different component of the ISO, and what do you need to do before we start. As I told you, ISO came from the uh, International Standard Organization. And this is the standard that you get in any organization. I mean, if you are working somewhere, uh, somewhere and you need to implement ISO 27001, you will buy this standard that explain all the controls that need to be in place. Now, ISO consists of 18 domains. I mean, if you go down, we have 18 different domains. And each domain have controls. So for instance, we have 
asset management this is a domain and under the asset management you have different controls that need to be in place we have risk management this is a, 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 a domain and under the risk management you have different control that need to be in place access control and so on and so forth when the actually first not all controls are applicable i mean you i'm sorry not all domains are applicable sometimes you will find a couple of domains that you cannot apply to your organization so not necessarily that you need to apply those domain so for instance we have domain one which is uh, uh, security uh, governance or uh, this is related to the commitment of management i will leave that i'm, I'm going to discuss about that at the end of this project because it's kind of uh, a little bit different we have uh, now those are the number of uh, controls so this control number one a 5.1 a 5.2 and so on we have for instance uh, human resources security this is the domain seven the human resources and under the domain they are writing down number of control and what need to be done okay we have uh let's take another one uh, termination they are discussed in under human resources determination process how it should be done the hiring process how it should be done you are not in charge of that but you need to discuss with your hr people that they are following that because this is what going to be audit uh, audited we have the information classification Actually, this is the, under the asset management, and this is what we will be starting with today, asset management. So you have, this is the domain number, and under the domain, you have different control. So you need to go through this standard, and actually, this is what we'll be doing in each, in each lecture, that we're going to take one of the domain, talking about the different controls, and then showing you in real life how it gets implemented. Now, you don't have to memorize the domain names or number or control, but if you can do that, this will be very useful. If you know that this specific domain is about that, it's, it's good for you, actually, but it's not a must. I mean, uh, you know, no one can, can like, uh, you don't have to memorize all the control number, but at least the most important one, you need to be aware of the control uh, uh, number. So this is the standard that you need to make sure that it's getting implemented inside your organization to be able to get the certification. I suggest, I have some suggestion, uh, suggestion before we start, that you create your own domain document, your own standard document in a way that, okay, all of you, I suggest that you create like an Excel sheet, okay? And inside this Excel sheet, you can create so we're going to name that, for instance, ISO 27001. Or you can name it the technical name, which is ISMS, because ISO is the name of the certificate. While what, while what we are doing is to implement ISMS. And then inside this sheet, you should write down, for instance, here, asset management. And then another one for, for each domain, you create a tab. And under each domain, you start writing here the controls. And you start writing a brief explanation about this control. This is going to be very, very useful for you. I mean, realistically, when you go to audit a place where they want to implement ISMS, at least you're going to have this checklist asking them, do you have that in place? Yes or no? Do you have that in place? Yes or no? So you will get to know what is implemented and what need to be implemented. This is called, <clears throat> called the gap assessment. So I'm going to give you some assignment. If you want to do it, you will get the best of this training. <clears throat> and actually, this is another point that I want to focus on. I prefer that you get involved in this project. <clears throat> I mean, do not consider it as a video that uh, you are just watching and that's it. It will be useless. But if you take notes, if you do like uh, uh, create some files, if you do some activity, uh, this will be very useful for you. It's like you are really working on the project. Beside, 
by the end of the, this project, if you request a letter of experience, I don't mind sending it to you because you really worked on a project like that. So maybe it's going to help. So I suggest that you follow the, this project realistically and not just uh, uh, watching the video and so on. So as I was saying, create your own standard. All the topics that we're going to talk about, write them down in each domain in different sheets. This will help you while you are going through this uh, different phases. Okay. okay, now let's get back to our presentation. We are still in the introduction part. We didn't start yet. OK. Now, uh, as I was saying, I suggest that you take notes because, you know, it's it's we have a lot of talking. So if you don't take notes, it may become a lot of boring. Uh, I will assign task. It will be nice if you share the task with your with uh, with other people team so they will get to share experience. Uh, try to take this project realistically. I mean, if you are working somewhere, think about it. I mean, are we implementing these controls in our organization? Is it easy to get implemented? Is there any challenge to do that? I mean, think about topics realistically in a real environment. Wherever you are working, think about it. How can we implement that? Uh, <clears throat> before we start, we need to have a communication channel. I mean, I invited people from different training. Actually, this course is mainly, or this project is mainly for people who are get, or people who's getting qualified as an information security specialist, because this is a main, like one of the main responsibility who, for people who are working as information security specialist. But also I invited CISSP people, because you will get the knowledge that you are studying in CISSP, except realistically. So when you are studying access control, maybe you know what is access control, maybe you know the different type of access control, but you don't know how we are implementing in real project. <clears throat> but later on, I'm going to need to share with you some documents, some standards, some templates. So I will not keep sending to all groups. Besides, maybe some people will not be interested in continuing in this project. So we need to have our own project uh, group where we can share the resources and so on. So I will create a group on Facebook and a closed group on WhatsApp. I prefer to depend on Facebook more because WhatsApp, whoever joined recently, he will not be able to check all the previous lecture. So I suggest to focus more on Facebook. And then we're going to share all the document and template on this uh, share book, uh, Facebook. I will send you the link within one or two days. Just join if you plan to continue with us. Uh, and I will keep also the WhatsApp group, but actually with the like larger amount of group I have right now, it's kind to ha hard to follow up with all the groups. So I will suggest to have or to uh, to keep the Facebook uh, group. Uh, I already spoke about CISSP uh, student. I mean, it will not affect your study. Uh, I think uh, it will it will add to your study. You'll get to understand how things is going in real uh, life when it comes to information security. Now, uh, let's start. <clears throat> OK. As you saw, that ISO is a standard coming from, from uh, uh, International Standard Organization. And uh, whoever holds this certificate, it reflects that this organization, small or big or medium organization, are implementing the best practice when it comes to information security. Before, it used to be something optional, but right now it's a must. I mean, if you are like an organization who are, who are holding customer financial information or who are holding important information or tax information, whatever, if you are ISO certified, people will, will trust your organization. And actually, right now, I saw that some people will not, or some organization or government, they will not deal with any private uh, entity unless they are ISO certified. 
which reflect that those people can secure our information. I will not share my information with you as a company unless you are ISO certified. So right now there is a big demand in the market today in different country for organization to get the certificate. To be able to get the certificate, as I mentioned, you need to implement some controls. Those controls are in 18 different domains. And as I told you earlier, that not all domains are applicable to different organizations. Maybe in your organization, only 15 domains are applicable. Maybe other organization, more or less. Not, so not necessarily that all the control going to be implemented. Okay. The point here, and please take notes about that, that besides the control need to be implemented, it need to be documented. This is quite important. When ISO people will come for audit and to check and accordingly giving you the certificate or not, they will ask about something. Are you doing, for instance, access control review? Are you reviewing the access control? Which you're going to explain in depth later on. You're going to tell them, yes. They will ask you, is this documented? Do you have a document saying that access control need to be done twice a year? Okay. They will ask you if you are, for instance, a bank or, or a government institute, how are you getting rid of the information? You said we have a shredder, we have this process. Fine. They will, they will like believe you, but they will ask you, could you show me a document that they, that mentions that? So the point with ISO is the documentation part. Documentation here, it's called policy. So all our process should be written in a policy. Okay. So any organization need to have a policy explaining all the information security management system. Okay. So today we're going to talk about asset management. Okay. You should have a policy named information asset management policy. And all your employees need to be aware of this policy. Okay, that's why we are doing information security awareness in any organization, just to tell the people, guys, we have a policy, you have to read it. If you don't read the policy and you are doing any breach or anything wrong, even by mistake, you will get resp responsible for that. You will get a, a, a responsibility from this problem. You cannot say, I didn't knew about that. No, you need to be aware that you have a policy and this policy is controlling the different assets and services that we are providing. That's why in any organization, if this organization, for instance, provide email for their employees, they're going to have an, a policy called email policy, which will explain what needs to be done and what should be prevented while using the company email. If this organization has internet available for their employee, they should have internet policy. You got my point? So all the controls uh, or all the, the uh, domains and controls that we're going to discuss in this uh, project need to be documented in a policy. Now, do I need to create a policy myself? You don't have to. It's kind of complicated. But you can get from different places. There is a lot of website from where you can get a template for a policy. At least you get to know how it should be written. But this is a must. And we're going to have a complete lecture about policy. But just a small like piece of uh, uh, advice that uh, website like, for instance, SEN. SEN, it's one of the best security organization. They have a policy, SEN Institute. Uh, templates. If you go to their website and go to uh, what is it? Resources. You will find, I think, policy project. Let me just put that here. So you will have to do some research. You cannot depend only on the websites that I'm going to share with you. Uh, here you go. Security policy project. You go there and you will find a lot of templates that you can use. So. You know, there is a server policy, network policy. And as I mentioned, we're going to have a, one lecture only for policy. So you don't have to worry. But what I'm trying to clarify is that implementing ISMS is not just to go to different people, tell them what to do. So you go to the network team, tell them what to do. You go to the employee, tell them what to do. It's not working this way. 
you need to have everything written as a policy and then tell people follow the policy and if is some if something is not clear about the policy you can then explain uh, to them uh, how it get implemented so keep this website as one of your reference I, i'm going to share with you a lot of website from here you can download a lot of uh, uh, important policy that uh, you can utilize in the isms now <clears throat> let's talk about today topic which is going to be the information uh, information asset management uh, i'm sorry information asset uh, yes management asset management which is uh, domain 8 uh, e8 this is the first domain that we're going to start with okay now what are we studying we are studying implementing how to implement isms information security management system which means i need to understand as an organization how can i manage my information securely right so for instance if i'm exchanging those information with the customer and those are critical information i'm sending bank statement i'm sending financial transaction how i am exchanging the information is it a secure method or not if i'm storing those information somehow or somewhere how do i store them i'm taking backup to this information or not do i need to encrypt them or not so here we are talking about securing the information which is considered for some business and some entity the real asset right asset in any organization it's uh, like physical assets and information assets which one is more valuable i mean think about yourself you have a smartphone in front of you right now the smartphone has a lot of information contact emails private messages private information right so you have the physical asset which is a smartphone and you have the information it, itself which are the, all those information if you lost your smartphone god forbidden what will bother you more the physical asset or the information asset you're going to be upset about both of them for sure but what will make you very very upset definitely the information if some someone was able to get access to the information you will not feel comfortable right same concept apply on business the real asset is the information and they hire people to secure the information okay now those information what are the shapes of those information and how can i secure the information of any organization if i am not aware of of them i mean if you get hired in a bank and they hired you as an information security uh, specialist right and they tell you okay let us know how much we need to spend to buy backup tapes and security devices and firewall and so on and so forth how are you going to act about that how are you going to start working the first thing i need to do is to identify the information in this bank or this entity and the value of this information and according i can decide how much i'm going to spend on that and how i'm going to spend on it right but if i'm not aware of the information that they have or the value of the information or the classification or the importance of this information how i'm going to implement security is it just to go and buy firewall and antivirus and, and, and spend hundreds of thousands or maybe millions randomly? No, it needs to be the first step is to identify your organization information. Okay, how can I do that? We usually start by having, and actually this is one of the core document in any organization, in any organization, they should have what we call information asset register iar so the first thing that you need to make sure that is there and if it's not there you need to create it and show to different employee how to fill it is the information asset register please write a note about that so when we start in any uh, organization and they hire us to implement information security or uh, to implement isms to be able to get ISO 27001, I need to make sure that different department have, each department have IAR or Information Asset Register. Okay. I want you to do a search online. You will find a lot of templates. 
but you'll get my point. So let me show you how it looks like. So let me take, I downloaded a couple of them and you can modify it, you know, but at least you, you need to understand the uh, uh, role of this document. It's just an Excel sheet where you should write down all your information as, as an organization. Let me get you a simple one. So this is a document, of course, some organization may, may have like a, a tools or may have a software or, but let's take it in a simple way. So it's just a document where you are writing down all the organization assets. So for instance, you put like uh, asset number one, it could be some document, okay? It could be some uh, annual report. It could be an organization database where they are keeping all the employee name and uh, financial information and contact information. It could be some machines or computers that have some information on them. Some smartphones that this organization are giving to people and they are putting on them like some application or something like that. So each department need to write down all the information that they have and the importance of this information. We're going to talk about the importance, but first we need to identify all the information that each department have. You are not the one who's filling this application, by the way. You are just getting the right uh, file and you go to each department and explain to them. Guys, to be able to implement ISMS, each department need to fill this document. And in this document, they need to write down all the asset, all the information assets that they have. Those information could be digital information like a document, Excel sheet, PowerPoint presentation, databases. It could be hard copy. Maybe they have contract. Maybe they have uh, any kind of document. It could be uh, people. Sometimes we consider people as information assets. What if you have someone in your organization that he's the only one who know how to perform a specific task. You have only one account in your organization. If this guy left, it will affect your business. You have to consider it as an information asset. So what I saw, and I, I'm gonna ask you to do your own sheet. You can download templates, but I want you to end up with a proper information asset register. So I can see some people, for instance, they create a sheet like that, but they put one tab for digital information asset, another tab, which could be a computer, document, Excel sheet, PDF, anything. Another tab for hard copy, if they still have some hard copy like contract, MOUs, things like that. And a third information uh, or a third tab for people. Well, they be, they'll be putting people who are important to the business, not according to their, like, uh, their uh, position or not according to because this guy is CEO, so definitely is important to the organization. It's not like that. But maybe you have someone, if he's absent one day or if he left his job, it will be, the business will be affected somehow. You need to write it down here. So we are writing our assets here. It could be a document. It could be an Excel sheet. And then you need to uh, identify the categories. This is a software. This is a digital uh, document. This is a database, a database, a computer, and then you need to identify the security or the, the importance of this document. Now, let me explain this part because this is quite important. And this is where you are facing the problem explaining to the people on your department, uh, in your business about that. You need to identify the confidentiality of this document, the integrity and the availability. This document. What is the confidentiality of it? Usually you give them a rate from one to four, from one to five, where one is very low, while five is very high. Okay, why we are doing that? Because when it comes to auditing the information security, people will open, will ask, uh, ask you to open the information, the auditor will ask you to open the information asset register, and they're gonna start checking the documents that has very high confidentiality. confidentiality. So if they find a document or a system that you mentioned that this is, should be very confidential, 
they will go and check what security you added to this uh, uh, system because it's quite confidential. This is what you wrote, right? Or if this document, the availability is very high, which means this document needs to be available all the time for the business, they will ask you how many times you are taking backup for this document. You got my point? So this part, it's quite important. And it will be, it will reflect on how much you're going to spend on the security. If you have like a lot of document that the availability is very high, which means that it should be available all the time, then you need to spend a lot of money on backup and tapes to take backup frequently because you know that if it gets lost, it will affect the business. Okay. But again, you are not the one who's who's like like uh, creating or uh, adding those uh, documents. You are just showing to each department what needs to be done. This is a must. Any information security management audit, the first thing they're going to ask about, show me your information asset register. When they go to audit any department for the certificate, first question, could you please show me your information asset register? If the, the department don't have or the business don't have an information asset register, he will not continue. Because, you know, what I'm going to audit, if you are not aware of your assets, so what needs to be done? Okay, so this is quite important. What else should be inside the information asset register? You should have also what we call the owner and the custodian. Who's the owner of this software? Usually the owner is a company. It's not a person, right? But the custodian is the one who's managing this asset. So I can have here, for instance, a document. I can write this document include all my customer information. The owner is my company, but the custodian is the, the, the guy or the lady who's managing this document. She's re the one responsible for this document in a way that if she lost it, she will be responsible. So we need to identify the ownership and the custodian of each document. And you need to understand the difference between them because you're going to explain that to the business. You're going to go to the department and explain to them the difference between owner and custodian. Okay. So, yeah. So we spoke about the assets, the security, which is not just the confidentiality, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Okay. I think you, you may be aware of confidentiality now and availability, but what is integrity? Integrity, which is how important is it to make sure that this document cannot be manipulated? Maybe this will include some license or maybe include some financial information. So if someone was able to modify it, this is going to be a problem. So according to that, maybe I need to encrypt this document or maybe I need to have two people verifying the document. So those are the three factors for each uh, asset that need to be identified. The second point or third point, which is going to be the classification. Forget about label right now because later on I'm going to explain to you what is the difference between label and classification. So classification, it's very, very important in any business. You need to classify your document. This one should be top secret. This one should be secret. Each organization has their own classification scheme. So first, you need to understand what classification schemes they are following. Is it four level? Is it three level? It doesn't matter. But the point is, you need to make sure that document get classified. Okay. How can I make sure that document get classified? Uh, let me remind you of something. Uh, at the beginning of this class, I told you that Anything that we are explaining need to be documented in what? In a policy, right? So definitely, whatever I'm explaining, you should have something called information asset management policy that explain everything related to the information asset management, including how frequently it should be reviewed, what should be inside, who should be responsible, this kind of thing. So whatever I'm explaining, it's not enough to go yourself and explaining 
explain, explaining it to your uh, department, but you need to make sure that it's documented in a policy and you tell the people, guys, whatever I'm explaining right now, it's inside the policy. So getting back to the classification part, okay. we have two different concepts here. I don't know if any one of you is aware of or not. Something called classification and something called labeling. Anyone knows the difference between classification and labeling? Okay. Classification, it's to have a policy or a methodology to classify the information. I mean, how do you classify the information? Usually people, they should have a reference in the classification. You, should, you shouldn't uh, doing it uh, randomly. But usually we classify the information according to the damage uh, that will be done if this document lost. So if I have a document and this document is quite important, should I write on it uh, secret or, uh, or confidential or confidential and restricted? Which one should I select? I will select according to if this document get lost or get damaged, what will be the effect on my business? Maybe people are going to suit me. Maybe uh, uh, I'm going to have uh, uh, like a legal issue with my organization. Maybe I'm going to lose, uh, I'm going to have financial loss. So according to the damage that I, my organization will suffer because of the, this document get lost or manipulated, I'm going to classify the information. If the damage is very high, the classification should be very high. This is called classification. You have a methodology that you are uh, build your classification according to that. But the labeling, it's to write something on your document, digital or hard copy, that will uh, uh, identify the classification. So for instance, if we are talking about hard copy, if you have a stamp that you are stamping the important documents that this is sec confidential, confidential, this is called labeling. Right now we have software that that is doing that. And many organizations are, are buying software because it's a compliance requirement. So we have, for instance, a software called Titus, very, very common software that do uh, the labeling part. So whenever you create a document, an Excel sheet, anything like that, it will ask you what kind of classification would you like to have? And it will write this classification on uh, the footer. Sorry. There is another, so Titus. I prefer that you are writing, uh, I suggest that you write the name of those products because when you go to an interview or something, at least you get to know. So classification tool. Okay, this is a tool that will show while uh, you install them on your uh, on a server and whenever you try to like send an email or create a file or save an Excel sheet, he will ask you on the level of classification. Uh, Semantic also has a tool. There is a, a tool called uh, Boulder James. So you can search for that, but it's a must. Beside when we implement classification, uh, labeling, also one of the things that we can do, we can uh, prevent the leakage of information. So if you have uh, any classification tool uh, like a BLG or a BNG or, or, uh, or a Titus or anything like that, you can put some control. Like if this file is confidential, do not allow it to be copied on a USB or to be sent by email. This is an, another application called DLP, but this is we're gonna will be talk about later on. So this is the information asset register that you need to be aware of, and this is the starting of the ISMS. And think about it: if you are not able to identify the asset in your organization, how can you evaluate them? How can you decide how much you're gonna spend on the asset, uh, on the security in this organization? Uh, this document needs to be reviewed frequently. And uh, whenever you modify something, it needs to be reviewed one more time. 
And this is what we have in the ISO here that you need to have. If you check the standard here, you need to have an information asset uh, register. This asset register need to be reviewed frequently. Uh, the asset register should include all your assets in different uh, format. Uh, classification should be there. Uh, uh, owner should be there. Custodian should be there. And this is what you need to check when you go to any organization. Show me your information asset register. Some organization will have one asset register for all their department, but this is not realistic. Some organization will have each department, like financial departments, they have their own information asset register. Uh, HR, they have their own. Some government, like, like the projects that I'm doing right now, they are quite big, actually. They have around 12,000 employees. So even departments, they have under department section. So each section, they have its own information asset register. So your responsibility is to explain to the department how it should be done, explain the content of that, and secondly, to explain to them uh, how to maintain it, because what I noticed is that people creating it, but th then they will not update. So what will happen in the audit is that the auditor will come, and for instance, he's checking a document, like a, a, a financial document. And then he will ask the user or the employee, this document, is it inside your information asset register or not? And if he said yes, he's going to tell him, okay, show me. And if the document is not there, this could be an NC, non-confirmity, okay? So the point is not just to fill this document, but to maintain it, okay? So your second task today, the first task is to create your own standard. By the way, I'm going to share, but not right now, I'm going to share with you a similar document like that, that include all the control, but later on. But this will only be shared with people who are like going through the process. So I'm going to uh, share a similar document. What I want from your side is to create your own standard. I want you to create an Excel sheet. And after each lecture, to have a tab related to this domain and write down the questions that you will ask the department or the business or the CEO related to this domain. Do you have an information asset register? How frequently it gets reviewed? Is people aware of the content of it? Uh, uh, do you have a classification for your information? Are you using any classification tool? And so on and so forth. Okay, this is the first task. Second task is to have to search for information asset register and create your own template. Put the information that you think it's important. You can send it to me, I review it, no problem. Uh, but, you know, at least you get to know how it, it what is the information asset register? Because later on, you're going to need to explain that to uh, the employee of your organization. Third task is to search for an information asset register management policy. I don't want you to create one, but can you search for one? Because eventually you need to have the document and the policy. But it's not just have the sheet. You know, maybe the people that you explain to them are going to leave the company and other people get hired. Do you need to keep doing that? No, you need to have the policy and refer people to read the policy. So this is quite important and it's going to be like basics for whatever coming. From here, we're going to talk about the risk management. From here, we're going to talk about business continuity. So it's very, very important uh, topic. So this is for today. So now, in case anyone has any question, feel free to raise it and then we can answer the question. And there is a chat windows, you can write your question. And no question. Okay, guys, is everything clear today? Would you like to follow up in the same way? Okay, yeah, start getting question. Is it a project for people who are in the... Uh, uh Nahid, for, for uh, PTCP, no, we're going to have different project for that. PTCP, actually, 
it's a part of the the information security uh, management system. I mean, they have to do penetration testing once a year and vulnerability assessment maybe two or four times per year. So it's going to be a part of it, but it's not fully dedicated for that. But if you have an option to, to attend this project, it's fine. I mean, definitely the knowledge will help you. Even if you are studying penetration testing, definitely understanding the concept will help you. Okay, Ayman, you have a question. Okay, uh, regarding SOX, uh, for different standard, I think uh, I can do one lecture for that, like different standards that people are following because it's very, very similar to the ISO 27001. So definitely you will find common control. So by the end of this project, I'm going to do a, like a, a lecture about the different standard and map the control from ISO to the standards that you are following. HIPAA and SOX and ISR and uh, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, uh, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, right now, uh, we're going to start with only one lecture every Saturday. Then later on, we can increase it according to the availability of people. So I will not be able to be committed to two lectures per week. But at least you're going to have one lecture per week, and I'm going to send you the schedule. Each Saturday, what's going to be explained? Ayman, can you tell us again about what should we do next week? Okay, assignment one more time. First, you need to have a standard sheet. I mean, I want you to create an Excel sheet like that. Uh, not this one, but something similar to... Uh, here we go. A sheet like that where you should write like this one ISO 27001 standard or ISMS and in each tab you need to write down here it's going to be for information asset management then you create a tab for incident management then you create a tab for risk management each domain is going to be in a separate tab and on each tab you're going to write down the point that you understood from this control what need to be in place okay and you, we're going to consider this uh, tab as uh, like uh, a questionnaire. If you go somewhere and they ask you to help them implement ISMS to get ISO 27001, you will open this uh, checklist. Do you implement that? Yes or no. Do you implement that? Yes or no. And we're going to utilize that in the gap assessment later on. This is the first assignment. Second assignment is to create an information asset register that you can explain to your employee. Okay, I show you a couple of templates, but I want you to search, get something suitable, understand it very well, because you are not, you will not be the one who fill it, but you're going to explain to your employee how to fill it. And the third assignment is to search for a policy related to information security asset management. Uh, template I will share, but I have to modify some of the template, but I prefer that. Because uh, honestly speaking, Adouj, if I share the template right now, no one will do any effort. And I don't want to keep, because if you just want to watch the video, I can lecture them any day and upload them to the group. But the, the scope of having it as a project is people to get involved. So I will not share any template right now. I want you to start working, getting template. If you are interested, if you think this will add to your skills, which I believe it will, so start working on it. Later on, I can share with you templates. Then you can compare between your document and the templates that you can modify. From where, from from there, you will get the experience. Okay, thanks, Nate. Taking notes. This is quite important. Yeah, this video uh, will be uh, uploaded to our groups within one or two days, and all the videos actually, not this one, all the video will be uploaded. And uh, next lecture, we will be talking about, uh, uh, most probably we will be talking about in uh, access control uh, and incident management, both of them, uh, hopefully. And we're gonna explain them in, in depth and how we are implementing in, in real business and one challenge we are uh, facing and so on.
uh, can you explain the difference between label and classification again? Okay. Classification is to be able to identify the, the level of importance of any document. So, for instance, uh, you have a document, you can, you can identify according to the content that this is a uh, confidential and restricted, or this is an internal, or this is a confidential. So you have a policy, and by reading this policy, you can identify the level, the level of the classification of this document. But you don't have anything on the document showing the classification. This is the labeling part. Labeling is to write something on the document or stamping or having an application software that will add a classification on the document. Okay, so classification is just an awareness part. Labeling is the implementation of classification. I hope you got you got my point. Uh, okay, okay, great. Do we need to uh, send you the Excel sheet? Uh, I prefer that you upload the sheet because actually, to be honest, I'm not sure that we'll be able to review all of them. It's fine if you send it to me. Whenever I have time, I'm going to go through them definitely. But the problem is the amount of email and WhatsApp message and group. It's uh, so. So what we can do, we can we can upload them on our group and then share the opinion about that, and people can get like uh, uh, more. Uh, experience about that. Okay. Uh, for people who are going through their experience and their background and so on, I prefer to send me an email because this is actually uh, like, uh, like uh, it will take time to t know about your experience and uh, if it's suitable or not. But let me tell you, definitely, definitely, you will, it will not be an overhead. If you attend this project, you definitely are going to get some knowledge. You will get some real experience. You don't have to worry about your background. Even if you start from scratch, you don't have to worry about that. Definitely getting involved in a project like that will, will be helpful uh, for you. Okay, guys, uh, about the timing. Uh, I usually send the timing Dubai time. And it's very hard to send according to each of you because some people are located in India, some people in United States, some people in uh, GCC. Uh, so I cannot send according to each one. So I usually send according to Dubai time and I will request you kindly to check the equivalent time uh, for the meeting uh, according to your, according to the time that standards that you are following. Okay. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you today. Uh, and uh, be patient. Believe me, I know it, it's maybe a lot of overheads and you're going to do some activity and uh, you will learn a lot of uh, uh, topics related to implementation, but really you will not regret that. I'm telling you from, from my own experience, this is really, uh, there is a big demand in the market. So please bear with me. You will end up with something very, very good. Trust me on that. Thank you so much. It was great. And inshallah, see you next week. Take care.